Hello and welcome back to this course. In the previous lecture, we have discussed NVIC and the external interrupt. In this session, we will configure the user button as an external interrupt and control the LED as per the interrupt request. So let's start. Open QIDE. I hope you are familiar with this screen and all the steps that we follow to create the project. So just click on start new STM32 project and wait for the initialization of target selector. If you are connected to internet, then it may download some required files. You can cancel if you want. Go to board selector, type the name 01 RE. This is the board. Select and click on next. Give the name of project. I am adding EXTI session rest of setting as it is click on finish click yes to initialize all peripherals in default mode and wait for the device configuration tools to initialize so this is the configuration window clear the pinout as we do in every session from the pinout menu clear pinout and click yes the led is connected on pa5 so click on pa5 and enable it as gpio output now next thing is we need to enable the user button user button is connected in pc13 now we will enable pc13 as gpio exti 13 now by enabling gpio exti 13 what we have done is like this is for pa15 similarly same multiplexer is available for pa13 so that pa13 pb13 pc13 pd13 pe13 can connect to exti 13 so configuring pc13 as GPIO EXTI line 13 we have connected PA13 to EXT line 13 click on A to Z peripheral go to RCC enable HSE as bypass clock source now go to GPIO and you will find the active pins in the list click on PC13 extend this configuration window for clear visibility you can see there are three more settings for PC13. So one is GPIO mode. Now this mode is different from that we have done till now. Now the mode is external interrupt mode with rising edge trigger detection. We need to change this to external interrupt mode with falling edge trigger detection. Why falling edge? We can see in the schematic that when we press the user button, the logic will be converted from high logic to low. That means there is a fall in logic from high to low so we want this pin to generate interrupt at falling edge now go to nvic peripheral in the nvic you will find listed interrupt table that we have seen in the reference manual by default few are enabled we have to enable ext line 15 colon 10 that means interrupt line from 10 to 15 and we have enabled pc 13 so 13 pin lie between 10 to 15. We have to enable this. If we do not enable this interrupt line, then the PC 13 will connect it to EXTI 13, but the interrupt will not hit to NVIC engine. So by enabling this line, we have connected the interrupt line to NVIC engine. Next is code generation tab. By default, it is generated Q handler for this interrupt line so that's all for the configuration now go to clock configuration select hse type the maximum clock frequency and hit enter project manager nothing to do with it so just go to file click on save now go to core open main.c there is one more file it.c it stand for interrupt double click on this file to open the interrupt.c file if you scroll down this file you will find a number of handler defined for particular interrupt request and at the end this is the function that is defined for the interrupt request handler for interrupt line 10 to 15 that means whenever we press the user button the controller will point to this function and this function will be executed so in this function there is one more interrupt request handler defined if you right click on this function and open declaration you will find the exact operation of this function that what this function perform you can see the comments written above this function that this function handles exti interrupt request and it takes the parameter gpio pin specify the pins connected to the ext line so in our case this is gpio pin 13 so within this function it detects the interrupt line and clear the interrupt line this is the important thing for the user end that we need to clear the interrupt line so that next time 
a new interrupt can occur and at last a callback function is there that is gpio external interrupt callback and you will find the function defined just below and the type of this function is defined as weak this weak keyword defines that this function can be modified as per user requirement so let's add our user code just copy this function go to main.c and in the user code begin zero paste the code start curly bracket and hit enter now in this function we have to add the code that we want controller to perform on the occurrence of interrupt that means when we press the button an interrupt is generated and what we want controller to do when the interrupt is generated so i am incrementing a variable called mode whenever we press the button this mode variable will be incremented but we don't want this variable to go beyond 3 so we'll compare that if mode is greater than 3 then reset it to 0 okay so let's define this variable at uint 8 underscore t that is 8 bit of integer type the variable name mode and give the initial value that is 0 okay now go to while 1 now we will add the functionality for the mode that we have incremented on the occurrence of interrupt so compare if mode is equal to 0 what we have to do is we want to turn off the led that is connected on gpio port a gpio pin 5 and the reset logic close the bracket and add comments turning off the led if mode is equal to 0 we will turn off the led if mode is equal to 1 we will turn on the led by sending high logic a5 if mode is equal to 2 then we want led to blink rate of 500 millisecond copy the same code again change the logic to and copy this code this here or like if mode is equal to 3 we want the led to blink at a rate of one second we have added a beautiful functionality for the user button configured as external interrupt line what happen is when we press the button the processor will point to this handler function and within this handler function this external interrupt request handler will be called and as per function definition of irq handler this callback will be executed and in the callback we have defined to increment a variable mode by one and limit it to three that means it cannot exceed three if it exceeds it will reset to zero now for different mode we have added the functionality in while one so simply is that by default the led will be off if we press the button once the mode will be incremented by one and led will be turned on if we press the button again the mode will increment by two and led will blink at a rate of 500 millisecond and if we press the user button again then the led will blink at a rate of one second and if we again press the user button the mode will increment to four and it will compare to here that if mode is greater than three so four will be greater than three and mode will be reset to zero so we are done with the code just go to project click on build all and you will see the build is finished with zero error and zero warning now take the target board connect it to the system go to run debug as stm32 cortex m c c++ application the configuration window open click ok this will upload the code to your target board and the perspective changes to debug if you click on this resume button the code start running you will see the various mode defined in the code is actually getting executed so this is the default state that led is turned off now i am pressing the button the led is turned on again pressing the button led start blinking one more time if i press the blinking rate changes to one second and if i press the button once again the led will be turned off again so this was the demonstration of gpio pin configured as external interrupt whenever i am pressing the button it is generating an interrupt to the processor and rest the processor is executing the task defined by us that's all for this session see you in the next one